My name is Guy Wallace. I've been in the learning and development profession since August of 1979. And I'd like to talk a little bit about how we are now hyper-focused and all hyped up about skills. But I've seen this movie before. I saw it with competencies back in the 1990s and the early 2000s. And so for 30 years, we've been focused on competencies and have now shifted over to a focus on skills. But back in the 1960s and 70s, the focus was on behaviors. Tom Gilbert, in his 1978 book, Human Competence, bemoaned the cult of behaviors, where we were focused on behaviors, a means to an ends, without understanding the ends. And we need to begin with the end in mind, the terminal performance that behaviors and skills and competencies lead to. Now, in my view, performance competence is all about the ability to perform tasks to produce outputs that meet stakeholder requirements. That's the terminal performance. You have good outcomes when you meet those stakeholder requirements, and you have poor outcomes when you don't. We need to quit beginning in the middle with skills or competencies or behaviors. We need to first focus on that terminal performance, those worthy outputs or services rendered, and then systematically derive the enabling knowledge and skills, behaviors, and competencies, and then prioritize those because you probably can't afford it all. We need to structure our approaches to our solutions to address skills deficits, beginning with that end in mind, beginning with the terminal performance. And when we think about task performance that leads to those worthy outputs, we need to consider the cognitive tasks, the covert cognitive tasks that parallel the overt behavioral tasks that we can see, that we can measure, that we can count. If we don't understand the thinking that goes in parallel with the doing, we will leave our learners short in developing their own competence. And I think our focus should be on performance competence. Now, I'd like to tell you a little story here. Um, back in my very first consulting engagement, back in November of 1982, I was working for Exxon Exploration USA. These are the people that search for oil. The target audience was geologists and geophysicists. Now, the organization had become extremely concerned with the fact that in a few years, there was going to be mass retirements as the workforce who had all been hired basically after World War II were all going to come up to retirement time at the same time. And the average years of experience of the geologists and geophysicists who were in charge of oil exploration was going to plummet from 28 years of experience down to five. Well, this was rather concerning. The cost for drilling for oil back then was a million dollars. It's $3.2 million in today's money. And only one out of 11 attempts to drill for oil was successful and that oil was found. So given the plummeting years of experience and the financials, and the ratio of successful plays versus unsuccessful plays, as they were called, uh, was of great concern. Now, they were using an informal means to development of their geologists and geophysicists that took them 10 years in order to develop someone to where they could be put in charge of an exploration. This was no longer going to be sufficient. They couldn't wait 10 years to develop people because in just a few years, they were going to be facing this enormous experience crunch. They hired my organization to come in and conduct an analysis after a team of executives in the oil exploration division had spent nine months arguing about how to approach this. Well, we came in and did a performance analysis and then systematically derive the enabling knowledge and skills. I, my job, my role in all of that was to construct a curriculum architecture 
of structured OJT, on-the-job training. This was 1982. Now, they had been calling what they were doing an apprenticeship program. And there was structured apprenticeship programs and unstructured apprenticeship programs. And there was quite, theirs was quite unstructured. Um, you couldn't tell from one coach, one supervisor to the next, what they were really doing in order to develop their people. So it was a very uneven process with uneven results. Um, this approach that we used was to create coaching guides um, that would help the supervisor or another expert to become a coach. They were given a script to follow, so to speak, of things to do, things to say, things to test people on. And so we lended a lot of structure to their unstructured program and help them address this. Now, our clients really loved it. Um, the the headquarters uh, training staff back in Houston, uh, to their chagrin, found out that the field wasn't going to wait for them to develop the 60 modules of this curriculum. They started developing them themselves. And of course, they were all different and the structure was different. So my first job as a consultant was to attend a meeting and to develop two prototype modules for them um, to show them how they might structure this. Then that was taken by our clients in Houston out to the field where it was reviewed and then adapted slightly and then became something that everyone was to adopt, that structure. And so all 60 modules of the curriculum were built using the structure that I had worked out with the headquarters training staff. The client uh, was successful in this, and we saw them at an NSPI conference a few years later, and they were uh, boastful about the fact that their approach to developing geologists and geophysicists had won them business in China. Their competitive edge in competing for business in China was that they had a proven approach, a structured approach to developing Chinese nationals so that they wouldn't just come in and uh, go look for oil and find it, they would be able to develop their counterparts in the Chinese companies that they had partnered with. The point of all of this is that there's two key aspects, I think, uh, when we're approaching uh, developing people and dealing with retirements, uh, or growth needs, uh, and that is we need to have structured versus unstructured approaches. And those approaches that we use have to be uh, based in, oriented to the performance requirements with the end in mind. You need to begin with the end in mind and not begin in the middle with skills or the competencies or the behaviors of the past. So it's a huge mistake that's been made for decades now, but it's easily fixed. Start with a focus on terminal performance. And that means you cannot approach this as a one size fits all effort. And that's what most organizations try to do because they can't imagine the amount of work that it takes to actually do this and do it well for a measured results on their efforts.